let's slide over to to time restricted eating. So I'm interested in where this kind of enters this conversation with regards to our circadian biology. How many hours across the day does the average person right now, say in America, eat? And how is this affecting circadian biology? Yeah, so the concept of uh, eating within a certain hour, so it relates to circadian biology in many different ways. One is the overall idea is just like our brain can stay awake during daytime, solve complex math, and then wants to sleep at night to repair, reset, and rejuvenate, almost every organ in our body also has a peak time when it can perform much better and needs some downtime to repair, reset, rejuvenate. That's the overarching principle. So now, if we look at every single aspect of our digestive system, when we eat something, it has to be digested in our stomach and there has to be a lot of acid secretion and then digestive juice, all the enzymes have to be secreted so that the food gets digested. It takes almost five hours to digest a good sized meal, uh, for example, breakfast, lunch or dinner. So now um, let's start our math from the from the night time. Suppose say one eats around say eight o'clock at night Although we finish eating at 8 by 8, 8, 15, the stomach continues to work for the next five hours to digest that food. So that means around 1 o'clock or 1.30 in the morning, that's when the stomach is finally getting some downtime to go to go to repair, reset, and rejuvenate. Our stomach lining um, needs to repair nearly 7 to 10% of the cells that line the stomach. So there's a good amount of repair that happens. Mm-hmm. And then our, our lower, lower intestine, uh, the food moves in our digestive system because of this peristaltic action, because the, uh, the muscles contract and expand. So that's how the, move, when the food moves. Uh, but that action also slows down and also almost stops because the intestine needs to sleep. So as a result, the food actually doesn't move much. Um, so some of you, some of us who, when we eat late at night, next day we feel like the food is not digested. And it's not just a feeling. Actually, the food doesn't get digested properly because the peristaltic movement stops. So now, uh, if we think that your stomach, just like our brain, needs seven to eight hours of downtime to repair. So that means if you eat at eight o'clock and if your stomach gets a break at one o'clock in the morning, for the next seven to eight hours it needs that downtime so that it can repair itself, then one should not eat until at least nine o'clock in the morning next day. So that's the simple math just from the stomach point of view. There are many other aspects of our uh, digestion, nutrient uh, assimilation, and that essentially tell us that we should be eating uh, for no more than 12 hours in a day because Mm -hmm. we need that five hours of digestion after the last meal and then seven to eight hours of repair and rejuvenation to be ready for the next day Mm. and how how long is the average person currently eating over what's a typical eating window if you were just to go and grab the average american yeah so another point is we don't eat the same at the exact same time every day so for example i'll give you an example and you can actually give me the answer i'll give give you some example and then ask you a question. So for example, suppose say I eat today, I eat my breakfast at six in the morning, tomorrow it will be 6.15, day after tomorrow it's 5.45, another day maybe eight o'clock or seven o'clock. And if somebody asks you, hey Simon, uh, when does Sachin actually typically eats breakfast or when does his circadian system she's expects to eat food, then the answer would be around six o'clock. Um, because one day maybe I ate at 5.45, but usually around 6 o'clock, 6.15, 6.30. So now if we do the same math and then take two weeks of food data from somebody and then ask what is the probable time window in which this person is likely to eat 90 plus percent of its meal, then the number that we get is 14 hours, 45 minutes. So nearly half of the adults in the U.S. who are not doing shift work because for shift workers, it's even worse. Nearly 50% of adults eat for 14 hours, 45 minutes or longer. Mm -hmm. Less than 10% of people actually eat consistently within 12 hours or less. So that Mm -hmm. means there is room for improvement for almost all of us (laughs) to improve our health just by paying attention to when we eat or when we stop eating. Right. And you you said it takes about five hours to sort of digest the last meal that you have at the end of the day and then after that you need about seven to eight hours to 
to kind of get that repair process happening. Um, can you just define a little bit deeper what what repair means? Is this where things like autophagy I often see sort of brought into this conversation? Um, is this where processes like that sort of come in? Yeah, so there are many types of repair. Um, so let's start with the gut because during during the day we eat a lot of different stuff and then there is also uh, enzymes and acids that are secreted and we damage nearly 8 to 10% of our stomach lining. And you can think of this as the uh, your highway or the road or you can think of the cobblestone road where you take out 8 to 10% of the stones every day and they have to be repaired. They have to be physically replaced. And the way that happens is growth hormone from our pineal gland is secreted and actually the secretion goes up with two signals. One is fasting and second is our uh, deep sleep. Mm -hmm. So if we haven't eaten for several hours and if we're in our deep sleep, then the growth hormone is secreted. That gives a signal to the stomach lining to divide and replace these damaged cells or, or dead cells. And this is a very uh, relatable repair process that we can think of. And similarly, in the brain, when we sleep, then many of our, um, our toxins, brain toxins, they do get secreted into the outside of the cell. It's almost like taking the trash can out and leaving it outside for the for the uh, for the truck to come and pick it up. So that also happens. So that's like taking the toxin re- literally out of the body. Mm-hmm. And you also mentioned autophagy, and autophagy also occurs after several hours of fasting. So that's internal, almost like recycling process within the cell. So all mm-hmm. three types of repair where you are recycling within the cell, taking the trash out outside the cell. And even replacing the entire cell when it is damaged, all these three types of repairs happen uh, during our fasting plus sleep mm-hmm. time. And so you said we we should aim for at least 12 hours of period without fasting. food, right? Yeah. Um, so what would you, if we were to kind of just at this point, before we keep going, if, if we were to kind of define what you think is the optimal eating window and, and sort of translate that into what that looks like in, in the standard person's um, daily life. So not a shift worker, just a standard person. What would that look like in terms of um, the time that someone, say, wakes up, their breakfast, lunch, dinner, and bedtime? Yeah, so let's start with the bedtime because your next day actually begins when, with when you go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> So try to be consistent in going to bed and then try to be in bed for eight hours so that you can get seven hours of sleep. And then after waking up, one should wait for at least an hour or two before eating anything with calories because Mm -hmm. that's the time when our sleep hormone melatonin goes down and our cortisol rapidly rises and reaches its peak and then slowly adjusts its, itself. Our insulin function, our insulin secretion is adversely affected by both processes, insulin, uh, sorry, by melatonin as well as high level of cortisol. So that's why one should avoid food for one to two hours in the morning. And then have your breakfast at a consistent time because since our clocks get synchronized with each other and with the outside world um, by two signals, light and food. And actually, over the last five to 10 years, what we are seeing is food is a much more stronger signal for all our peripheral organs than light. Light is a very good signal from for brain, but food is very strong for the rest of our body. So eat your breakfast, the first meal uh, that has calories at a consistent time, and then try to eat all your meals in the next 8, 10, or maximum 12 hours. And in most of our clinical studies, we target 10 hours because 8 hours is a little bit difficult for long-term compliance. If somebody can do 8 hours for a month, 2, or 3, that's fine. But many of us cannot do it for for our rest of our life. So Mm -hmm. it's a good goal to have 10 hours. So that okay. once in a while you can eat within eight hours and once in a while if you if you cannot and go towards 11 or 12, you are not actually breaking, mm-hmm. uh, not doing too much damage. So that's why 10 hours is an ideal target. So an example of that could be 9 a.m. to 
7 p.m. That, yeah, that might work well 